utterly disgusting. This is just, come look at this, Luis. You're a new guy. I don't think you've ever seen anything like this. Yo. Whoa, hey, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa. Hey, what? What is this? Can I help you or something? Can, can you guys come out and play? Come out and play? Yeah, we, can you come outside? Let me ask my mom. All right. <laughs> This is a one of eight, Corum Billionaires, Turbion, Factory Diamonds. The retail of this piece right here is about three quarters of a million dollars. <laughs> trying to buy a sub off them. They might. They have two subs I want. They have a ceramic and then a uh, non-ceramic with bezel engraved. I think it might be a good pick You're up. You're going to buy today? You're going to purchase? Yeah. We're just going to go see, see what's up. Yeah, yeah. Let's go see their inventory. All right. You guys are in New Jersey, but they close. Bad boys, bad boys. What you going to do? What you going to do when they come for you? I'm not as much of a cop as Chris. So with his mustache. <laughs> I mean, you're pretty close to cop looking right now. Mark, what you got on today? Uh, 16808 Tropic Doll. That doll used to be blue, believe it or not. This is a, this is a crazy transformation. Blue, purple, brown to bronze on the way to champagne. That's five color changes. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. All right, so we're really gonna we're gonna have like a really nice discussion with Wolven. I need a good cop, some. bad cop. Uh, Luis, you look like a bad cop today. What the hell? Ain't gonna be like, donde eres la pinche platona? The way. Donde está la platona? I can try to get serious. Plata o plomo? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we are at Wolven. I know you guys are familiar with their channel. Uh, so we're just gonna go in there and try to buy a couple of watches. I, I, I know I need one from them that I saw they had on their website. I'm gonna see if I can't buy it. And then they have another watch in there. I'm kind of interested for stock. I have a sold order. What the? <laughs> Man, I the door. Bro. I locked the door. Bro, what the hell? Yo. Whoa, hey, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa. Hey, what? What is this? Can I help you or something? Can, can you guys come out and play? Come out and play? Yeah, we, can you come outside? Let me ask my mom. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they got the doors locked. They're scared of us. I understand. There we go. What's up, bro? That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay, so yeah. where are we all? Where are we all on this watch? Oh, yeah. I want to be at 13. Eleven five, bro. Bro, you can do like honestly do me a solid on this watch. Four five, four five. Yeah, what? I think so. Check it. I mean, I'll be honest. I have it sold for thirteen, but I'd like to be at twelve. Twelve. Could have been Bro, I will buy another watch. I'm gonna buy some more. I just want to buy some stuff for stock. So I'll take this at twelve if you can do it, and then I'll I'll grab some stock. Okay. All right. 12 and then buy something for stock. Yeah, this is the one I was looking at earlier. This is the one I want for stock. I like, I always like these. I think these are really, really good, solid, you know, watches that hold on in inventory. This is a sub, it's a transitional model. It's kind of towards the end. So this is when they went like bezel engraved, um, solid and link, super lumino, obviously super lumino and everything else. So it's kind of like the last hoorah for the 16610 before they went ceramic and added all the crazy, crazy updates to that. So this is this is a nice piece and it has a card, right? Yeah, it's not, it has a card from 08, has papers, well, so the only book thing that would be better than this is an M serial. The only thing that would be better than this watch would be, um, would be a scrambled card. Have you ever seen those? So believe it or not, they actually uh, ended this watch around 2010, 2011. Um, and some of them kind of ran into a scrambled serial number with the uh, with the card. So those are super, super rare. The rarest one I think I know of is the Kermit that came scrambled. Those are like, I've seen one in my life. That's a unicorn, so. But anyways, okay, this I'll take for stock if you do 85. Bro, give me nine. No, oh, dude, you guys came down last time I was here, we were close. 87. No, you guys are at 87. All right. No, I can't. 87. Super fair. This is just for stock. 
No, you can make it, bro. We're so close. 87. I know, but I gotta be at 85. I, I feel sold order. I would take it for nine, but I don't have it sold. I think the last one is sold. To be honest, I think I sold one for nine. I, I'm happy to make 500 bucks. You know you can make more than 500. You can make more than 500. Well, like I said, I sold my last one for nine. Hard has the solid links. It's at total. It's 85. That's plus 12. Uh, 20 and a half. For both. That's fine. All right, done. That was a terrible. This, that was even worse. Wait, wait, what's that one? What's that one where they grab each other's wrists? That's what that felt like for a second. I was like, uh, that's like that's like a very special yeah, spider and then heel kick at the end yeah all right cool lock that up for me anything else i can buy dude how buy much this, for the cake buy this for discontinued price 40k oh, I Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll come. Okay, uh, 40k, discontinued, sixty grand. Maybe not. Come on. Yes, say discontinue the reference number. Oh yeah, it's a three three instead of a three two. That's like the sneaky. That's the sneaky thing they did with the deep sea. They went. They went with a one three six 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 zero. Like oh okay, and all they did was omit the like with the diver extension. Oh, oh you got us. Like. <laughs> Ooh, how much for this? Is this new or used? Uh, that is... I believe we have it listed. It's very nice. AP 15400 blue. Mm, it's a very, very nice 30... It's a very nice $38,000 watch. Yeah. Alright, what what area in the 40s are you guys asking? Low mid. Ooh, discontinued blue Milgals. This is a great, great investment piece. This is right here. If you're in the, uh, you're in the market for a Milgals, this is the time to pick it up. They kind of went crazy high when they came back down to a sensible price to which they'll just glide on up because Rolex doesn't make this anymore. So I kind of want one of these for a Those look daily, good. daily beater. I, don't, I think this would honestly be a watch I wouldn't mind just buying. I'd almost pay retail for it. Just whatever they're asking, I almost might just be like, all right, whatever, it's for me. Let me see you again. I mean, I kind of like it. It fits my, it does fit. it fits it my fit pretty well. style a little bit. I love quirky shit, so you know, like that's yeah. pretty. That's pretty quirky for a sub. You know, that is pretty. Uh, very quirky it's pretty out there. All right, so we got this. Twelve thousand. Good number twelve. Yeah, that's that's about the right. We're really making less than ten percent. It's not quite ten percent, but. It's a used sub, it's not brand new. So brand new, they're going for like 15, 15, five pre-owned. You can get good deals if the cards are old and beat up like this one, so. All right, traffic light deal of the day. We're stuck in traffic. So if you guys see this, comment traffic deal or text me traffic deal. $9,000 for this bezel engraved. 16610 complete with box and paper. So That's a pretty solid deal. No, I'm asking 10 on a website. But if you say traffic deal because you saw it at the light, I'm going to give it to you for 9. That is making me a little $500 profit, which is way more than fair. And then I've seen these wholesales. Okay, wholesale last time I saw one, it was around 9250. I don't know. People ask a lot for those bezel engraved uh, five digit subs. So, I see you, Marco. Saying traffic, I'm gonna do traffic light deals. We're driving around. We got watches in the bag. We're, we're gonna pop them out at the tra at the stoplight, and you know it's gonna be a traffic light deal. Nine thousand bucks. I have a client who picked up the James Bond No Time to Die watch, and he it, so those come from the factory or from the boutique with either the titanium mesh bracelet or the NATO strap. And he wanted the NATO strap and this one had the titanium mesh bracelet. So what we're gonna do is, in good old fashioned grand caliber way, is take an Aston Martin with the Omega bracelet already on it. So James Bond it up. We're gonna go to the boutique and get him that NATO strap. We're gonna throw it in for him. All right, so it's a new day. Um, getting this strap was a little bit of an adventure. We went to Omega at North Park Mall here in Dallas, and one, we couldn't film in there, and two, they did not have the strap. They were fresh out. I don't know if they're being serious or not. 
So we called around forever and then we eventually got Miami to you know give us an allocation for one of these straps and it took a few weeks to get here but sure enough we got the strap we got our clients coming in any minute now to pick this up so I'm gonna go on his no time to die. So I got something special for you guys. This is something you guys have to be absolutely aware of. Not every auction house are created equal, meaning not everybody at an auction house knows what they're doing. And I don't know the specific auction house yet, but this client of ours bought a Daytona at an auction and it's sat in a safe for a few years. He started sending me pictures, says something looks off with your watch. And he said, what do you, and so I got more pictures and more pictures, just started un, un, you know, unraveling itself to me. Watch has all kinds of issues. It's a 6263 in gold. This watch should be around 200, you know, on the market price for a champagne doll. Uh, and I've sold these watches for significantly more, you know, for different variations. But this one particularly came with some stuff that was known, some stuff that was, a lot of stuff that was unknown. And right now I'm inspecting everything in fine detail and a lot of stuff is really coming to light, such as it's a Frankenstein. It's not good. Uh, this is a very much a problem because nothing is really correct about this watch. This is, you know, Frankenstein, meaning this has some original parts on it, uh, but overall it's built around a fake watch. Uh, and now he is suing said auction house and I'm writing a report on this watch for him to use, I guess, in a court setting. So I'll show you the watch. This is, this is the watch right here. It's supposed to be a 6263, but you know, after looking at the case, the engravings are really bad. Uh, and I'll show you here on the, if you can pick this up, I'll show you here in a second on the screen. But you know, like stuff like that, right? That's not normal. You know, you don't want your $200,000 vintage Daytona coming apart on you. Not to mention the pushers are service. They're not factory pushers. Uh, they might be factory service, but they're not original to the watch, nor is this case original to anything. This is just the, most likely a solid gold Vietnamese case, but it's, you know, the, and the dial is original, hands are original, pushers were found there after their um, crown appears to be factory. Here's where it gets interesting. I'll show you guys something. Let me show you. This is the biggest red flag that started this whole conversation. So 72B, it's impossible for a 72B to be born in a 6263. It's not possible. It's not even the right movement for the watch. So right now I've got it under the microscope. Just checking okay. out the components. Obviously, 72B doesn't exist yeah. on the 6263. Uh, right. And obviously, I, I don't know what you know. Obviously, like I don't know what was sold to you as what, but bezels aftermarket, pushers are just added onto the case. The case yeah. is fake. Dial seems to be original but reloomed. Um, so the dial's reloomed. Uh, hands seem to be okay. Uh, they obviously have two bracelets here. One is original, one's not. One's 10 karat, one's I think 14 or 18 karat, the 71. Do you know if it's 18 yeah. or 14? Because I haven't found the hallmark on it. 18, it's 18, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, normally it's stamped yeah. 18. I just don't see it or haven't found that it. The other one is, I, I thought the same, 10 carats, and it's like a stretch, it's written like Soto Largo. It's completely out the market, yeah. Yeah, all right, right, right. Yeah, and it's smaller too. It's an 18 millimeter, not a 19. Um, yep. Because 18 millimeters don't have the tabs. So you see there's missing the tabs on the side. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and then this is a 19 and it has the correct tabs. This is a correct bracelet. There's nothing wrong with that. Oof, the details that. here, That's so rough. that should help. <laughs> you can see the engraving is like really rough. You see how it's inconsistent? Like you see, at the, mm -hmm. look at the three. Oh yeah. Can you see that? Yeah, it's wrong, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see how it, like at the bottom it's like carved out and then it looks like they like stopped the machine or something and then it retried to engrave. And look at the S, mm. oh my God, look at the S. You see how fat the engraving is? <laughs> and at the top yeah. and how skinny it is at the bottom? I mean, this is just not Rolex, like, you know what I mean? Like, this isn't what Rolex would mm -hmm. do in a situation here. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. definitely everything, on, and I try to tell people, when you're dealing with watches like this, it's it's all guilty by association, right? So everything yeah. with the watch is mm -hmm. just consider it, like, scrap. You know, I told, you know, like, hey, if you absolutely need to own this thing, which I don't see why you'd want to, but uh just you gotta break it down for scrap and what movements you know cost what dials cost and if you want to put it together like that be my guess but you know in this watch you know if you're trying to get your money back because if you don't mind me asking what was the hammer price on this watch uh, i can send it it was 35. oh 35 000? yeah if the movement's correct 
and the dial's correct, you got, there's there's your thirty five thousand. To be honest, basically, uh, you know, I, I, and you don't you know you don't have the copy there, but the owner basically said, no, uh, you know, the only thing that has been modified is some parts of the movement. My understanding is only some parts of the movement on our uh, have been modified or changed. I'm like, okay, that's what they said. All right, so let's see. I, you know, I figured maybe I'll make it to scraps and sell the parts. Right. So it's out much worse, right? They don't want to take the movement back. They don't want to take anything back. It's definitely hairy when they uh, when they don't disclose the case is fake. You know, that's the problem. So this is yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Donnie likes to play around things. He thinks he's gonna watch maker. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, I can start to see the inconsistencies with the movement. The movement has parts that are not lining up with with the 72B. You know, I mean, a lot of the stuff's original. You probably have a correct bridge. You know correct balance assembly etc oh, etc but then you have a gearing that's just from a from a non rolex you know <laughs> from a non rolex movement because these movements are very generic they use these movements across the board for everything 72b was just a 72b it's like you know it's basic but a lot of stuff looks correct and incorrect. I mean, I definitely see what he's talking about. But regardless, it doesn't even belong in this watch, period. I'm curious what the resolution's gonna be whenever, you know, they get everything. I'll keep you up to date, yeah. You see how it looks like it started, went around, and then stopped? It didn't start with a big chunk and then stop and then get real thin. You see, like, that's that, those are the type of inconsistencies that'll raise big red flags. Like, why would Rolex, as perfect as they kept things, all of a sudden release watches that have incons inconsistencies like that? It didn't make any sense. Yeah. Okay, well, hey, so, thank you so much. I really appreciate like, it. Like, everything should look pretty much uniform. And you can see here that this watch, it's obviously correct. That's kind of what you should look at, and especially in gold. You know, gold's gonna have probably thicker engravings because they just need to get through that gold. But um, the, uh, compared to this, <laughs> which is just hogwash. So you, you can see how like inconsistent the engravings are. Like that, you see how like it's just jittery in the middle of the eight. It looks inconsistent. This is where I really want you to see. This is where it's really bad. Apparent. Yeah, you see that S? Oh like, like the S is just jacked. Like you can just tell it's not correct. And that's like apparent in that three too. You see the three? Yup. How it's like carved out and then... Normal. And then normal. The two isn't really done. It's like thick at the top and super yeah. thin. Yeah, it's just not right. Not good. No. It's going back to the trash. All right, well. There you go, there's your Frankenstein 6263. Um, so, buyer beware. Just because the price looks really good on an auction site don't mean it's typically what you think you're getting. This is typically what happens, people are chasing a good deal and they're like, why well, rip this watch or I got this watch for so cheap, blah, 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 and then they come and show it off and then this is what happens. Like, yes. well, you didn't really get a good deal. In fact, you're probably down yes. 20 grand. <laughs> you just don't know it, yeah. so, yeah. One thing I'm gonna tighten up is authenticating the cards because it is apparent I missed a card the other day. Not that it was fake, but the dial reflected silver, but the watch dial was blue. I missed that, that's on me, 100%. So I'm gonna make sure I'm looking at the cards very carefully because that one got by all, all of us in this room. We missed that one. So I will tighten that up, that's fine. So what we have here is a 126720VTNR which VT means green and NR means black. So that is a Sprite, uh, very cool watch. So what, um, one thing I'm gonna look for, first thing is first, make sure the card matches the watch. I can't tell you how many times dealers misplace cards and they throw a card in, they're not realizing they shipped you the wrong card. Nine out of 10 times you get lucky, they find the right card, but there are times where just like, oh, that's the way it came, I didn't check. I'm like, all right, well, you gotta separate yourself from the herd. So you already see this? Damn, that is a cool watch. I don't know. I, I hated it, and I really kind of got mad at Rolex for releasing this watch because it's just so goofy, you know? It really is just really, really goofy, but the more I look at it, the more I start accepting. That's how I am with Rolex. Like, I hate them at first for releasing stuff. Give me about six months, and I start chilling out. I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, I, I kind of wanted to buy one to hold. 
I thought they would discontinue it because, you know, history says they released this watch in 1956 and discontinued it and figured, all right, they're pulling the same stunt, but they did not discontinue it, but maybe 2024 is the year they discontinue it. I don't know. But we're gonna check condition of the watch, make sure this is true new. Uh, Sutton, was this watch sold to us as new or pre-owned? The Sprite? Yes. No. New? Okay. So the one thing we look for in refinishing is you want to check the grain, you want to check the high polish, you want to kind of look for porosity or any type of signs that a polishing wheel has been over it. And you can see that, you see how the light just like refracts perfectly across, it's like a mirror finish. It's not distorted in any way, it's not been polished. That's what you look for. Because um, if you polish this watch once, this right here just kind of like distorts. It like takes, mm -hmm. takes that effect away. And then you want to look at the, you know, satin, make sure it's all nice and even and smooth, which it is. Uh, so it hasn't been polished. I mean, there you have it. I mean, it's not it's not been refinished or anything like that. You know, it's pretty nice. So yeah, you know, guys, how I like to authenticate watches. You know, you know, I like to look for dust. So you can see there's like a little bit right there. Um, yeah, there's a piece of dust right there, and you know it's on the dial, not on the crystal, because if you focus on the crystal, that's the dust on the crystal. That's the dust on the dial. See it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that one's good. It is new. New and dusty. Yeah, this has been refinished. So you wanna see what I see when I see a refinished watch, the instant tell. Bam, you see this? Look at the runoff, you see that? That is what happens when you're polishing and you don't tape it correctly and it goes right over into the polish. So that is a clear, I don't even have to look very long to see right away that has been refinished. It's very obvious in a lot of areas on this watch. I mean, it's like when you're a kid and you're like, you know, when the teacher's like, all right, we're gonna learn how to color and you want to stay between the lines, well, that kind of works its way into real life. Like when you're polishing a watch, you want to stay in the lines. You know, like this guy kind of swerved. Ah, that girl. Kind of, this one for sure was refinished. We don't even need to loop it. I already know. Um, that is a lot of links. You can almost put this on. Okay. That's a lot of links. This watch is so big in links. Okay, it's huge. And I can just put it on my wrist without... <laughs> How far up will it go? Babe, do you wear your watches like that? Um, so, no. <laughs> but there are people out there that do. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're the type of person that wears your watches like that, that is totally on you, do whatever you want. However, it will stretch the band very bad because the weight of the head is going to rock and create a lot of tension on all the links. And over time, they spread, they split, they become a problem because I, I guess, People think it's cool to wear it like that. It's just goofy, please don't do that. <laughs> just tighten up your watch. All right, you mentioned in Chicago you had some bust down watches you wanna move? Yes, sir. Let me bring out the wares. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, okay. You want all of them or just uh, one by one? <laughs> we were mostly looking at the APs and Rolexes and maybe the Patex. And, but this guy, I, I have a guy who wants to buy a package of like bus towns. So I think you, you mentioned he had like a selection, but Jesus, what is going on with these two watches? Well, this is a one of eight. Corum Billionaires, Turbion, Factory Diamonds. The retail of this piece right here is about three quarters of a million dollars. The retail is a 750? Yes, sir. And it's even got diamonds on the case back. If that's not a flex, I don't know what is. Full flex. <laughs> Full send. <laughs> it's a full send. Diamonds on the case. Those guys, if you wore this a lot, those, those would get so nasty. It comes with the uh, personal security. Does it? If you pay the 750. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, you, know, you buy a gray market, you don't get security. God, that thing is nuts. That is absolutely crazy. Yes, sir. So both of these are, you know, pretty similar retail price, being so, that they're that all a, factory diamonds. Dude, look at that. Turbulence. Strap. Stingray. Stingray? Oh, all no, all no, cut no, to match no, diamonds no. in the case. Yeah, I just need to take all of these to the office for uh, B roll. No, I'm yeah, for real. <laughs> There's no, I've never seen another that is wild. any watch where they go to that level of detail. Okay, these are probably above my pay grade. To be honest, like I have no freaking clue. So that I'm um, now. Um, this, how much is this? I would do a, a package deal of six hundred thousand for the pair. Yeah, six hundred. Yeah, bro, you really need somebody like from Beverly Hills to come buy these things. I think for two, it's a good deal. Yeah. I mean, you're way, you're like the, below half of the retail price for both. 
<laughs> it's a buy one, get one free at a retail level, right? Pretty much. Uh, Where's the bill for this guy? Damn, dude. I don't really get impressed by like bust down pieces too much personally, but this thing right here, like, I have to say baguettes is where it's at. Like, just insane. Like, I like this one a lot more than this one. Like, no, this is like, this is really art. This is a, it's a combination of, of high horology and high, and high jewelry making. I mean, this is just unbelievable. Yeah, this is stuff you see in like magazines. This is not so. like a typical Rolex collector comes and buys this kind of watch. No, this is, yeah. No. <laughs> this is a Rolex. Yeah, whoever buying this is like, they have a different type of appreciation for watches. Yeah, it's a whole nother ball game. All right, so we got a 57, Let's look at the more typical 57, stuff. 26. These are probably up more up my alley. Let's pull All right, these, let's let's pull these out. out. Those, yeah, no. Um, those are crazy, but not, I'm not crazy enough to... to you got a factory diamonds, Roger, are you interested? It's a little bit of a lighter payload, but still a beautiful ladies watch. I can run it by him. Let me call my client real quick and run some. All right, put it out there then. He said he'd be interested if the price is right, so... We can put this one on the side. But he's just mostly looking for like... He wants to buy an array of different type of bust down watches. So hopefully he takes this, but um, I told him it's factory. Like he obviously like likes the custom shit, but this is, wow. No, this is, this is I might take this for stock if he doesn't this want This is it. definitely something to consider. This is an this amazing piece. I mean, if the price is right, I could stock this. Like I need to try to get more into these type of watches because I think there's a market for it. All right, I got a number in my mind. Where's yours? Where, where do you see this sitting? All three, I'll do 90. I'll, this one I'll pay separate, because these I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna flip me. This will be more like, well actually fuck it. We're doing a package deal, you gotta put them all in. You gotta put them all in one time. Know. Yeah, you're right, I'm thinking. Let's do one, 115, I'll take one. 119, it looks pretty close. <laughs> Obviously di diamonds, everything tested, no problem there. That's factory, I don't have to worry you about it. You already know. I mean, you're a diamond guy, of course. I come, I come to him for my diamonds. I think we can meet in the middle somewhere. Dude, I would. I said, okay, legit, I'd meet you in the middle. Of the pro I, I know these are gonna cost probably, what, 3,500 for three links minimum. Like, they're expensive. They're like usually 1250 on call you're for gonna links. You're gonna bust my balls over some links here? <laughs> <They're not laughs> okay, if it was a sub we were talking about, like, no, I wouldn't, but if All right. we're- We're gonna do one number, done, done deal. What was that, 115, 117.5? Well, basically. All right, fine, let's do it. Oh, let's do it. That's all. Awesome. <laughs> it's right. yours now. All right, bag it up, let's go. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this episode. I hope you guys really enjoyed this day in the life video. We worked our ass off to make it happen for you. Uh, we hope to improving this content. And of course, like always, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for me, and stay tuned to the next one. Thank you guys so much.